Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my channel Think Deep. Today's talk is an introduction to decolonization. It covers four areas. First, definition of the concept. Second, historical process of decolonization. Third, thinkers and theorists. I will specifically discuss Franz Fanon's concept of decolonization and violence as explicated in his great work, The Wretched of the Earth. Finally, I will give example from South Asian literature to discuss and demonstrate how Fanon's ideas on violence and decolonization are well reflected there. aspects. Uh, decolonization has three fundamental aspects. First, it is a historical process of gaining independence from colonialism. Second, it is a cultural criticism of the lasting effect of colonialism. And third, it is a manifestation of anti-colonial sentiment that remains even after the achievement of political independence. As a historical process, it may involve lengthy negotiation with the colonizer. So we have the example of long and constitutional struggle of the Indian people against British Raj. It may involve organized resistance, war and revolution. This slide contains some questions. They will help you in shaping your research about the process of decolonization in colonial India. They will help you associate decolonization with literary genres like poetry and fiction, or the role of women and marginalized voices in the struggle for decolonization. I'm sure you'll find the questions relevant and useful. Let's move to the thinkers and theorists of decolonization. Franz Fanon is definitely first among them. He was a French Caribbean writer, authoring one of the most significant texts about decolonization. I mean, the wretched of the earth. It was authored during the Algerian war against French colonization. Fanon's principal focus in this work is on the psychological effects of colonization on the colonized people. He argues for the necessity of violence resistance in order to achieve true liberation. This slide contains some key features of the book, The Wretched of the Earth. In the first place, Fanon argues that decolonization did not simply imply formal independence from colonialism. On the contrary, it required a larger cultural and political transition from a colonized to a decolonized imagination. Thus, decolonization is taken not simply as the removal of colonial structure, but especially the deconstruction of colonial legacies in the mindset of formerly colonized people. Fanon also warns us about some pitfalls of decolonization, the first being the rise of native elites who could inherit colonial institution without changing the exploitative relation and practices. Nationalist elites could also become puppets of foreign master as ex-colonial power could rule their colonies from a distance through native elites. Most significantly, Fanon talks about violence. He asserts that decolonization is a violent phenomenon requiring colonized people to use violence to regain their humanity. There is a forewarning in Fanon's talk on violence in the decolonization process. And the forewarning lies in the constant threat of violence due to ineptness and corruption of the national bourgeois in the post-independent societies. Uh, this quotation uh, help you develop a full understanding of this constant threat, this forewarning. So please read it. However, in reading violence in Fanonian thoughts, 
we need a cautious recognition that he was not a supporter of wanton violence. Rather, he acknowledges the use of anti-colonial violence as a necessary evil, an important component in the native population's quest towards self-realization and the construction of a national identity truly free from colonial influence. In the coming slides, I propose to analyze how violence within South Asia's decolonization method has persisted and impacted regional geopolitics. I aim to highlight the contemporary relevance of Fenonian concept of violence in South Asia through some relevant textual examples. I aim to discuss how decolonization triggered violence and cyclic violence in the aftermath of partition in India and how cyclic violence has generated an ongoing spectacle of anxiety and discontent in South Asia. We see violence continues to be a part of imperialism. We see violence in targeted military operations going against unwanted threats all over. We see violence in technology-based precision in war. We see violence in Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And we see violence in war on terror and the new modes of colonial dominance. Mohammed Hanif's Red Bird is the best case study in this situation. It helps us visualize large-scale destruction of the entire country and the whole population compelled to live in makeshift arrangement in tents without food, water, and shelter. In this quotation, Koban has developed a parallel between globalization and new colonialism, uh, new imperialism, sorry, and violence. I suggest you read this detailed condition and it will help you develop a complete uh, vision of the changing face of imperialism and violence. Now I talk about Fanonian concept of violence and its relevance to 1947 indo pak partition. First is the cycle of violence. Again, I would suggest you to read this detailed quotation as it will help you understand what Fanon thought about the cycle of violence. The explanation given in this quotation help us understand the cyclic violence in the pre-partition subcontinent. It applies to the desperation and fear that fuel violence in India. It explains how decades of colonial manipulation had eroded trust between communities, making them vulnerable to incitement of violence. We know that violence is inherent in the very act of indo pak partition. We know that partition caused the trauma of separation from ancestral land through dislocation and displacement, having long-term consequences, fueling future conflict in the region. The given quotation will tell you about the normality of violence that the word witness during the partition crisis. Now I briefly discuss the representation of violence in three South Asian novels. The Arbebsi Sid was Ice Candy Man, Amitav Bush, The Shadow Lines, and Surya Khan Noors. These novels present quite different, rather divergent views on partition and violence in South Asia. Violence is at the center of Ice Candy Man. The recent article by Rabani and Mishra delves into the centrality of violence in this compelling novel. To fully grasp the complexity of the ideas explored, I highly recommend reading their article in full. The slide contains a summary of the article for reference. Amitav Ghosh, The Shadow Lines. It is a very important and subtle depiction of violence in post-partition India. The lines of the title are metaphorical, representing divisions and borders, separation of families, communities, and nation, 
creating a permanent sense of fragmentation and unease. We find the character grappling with issues of displacement and identity, and they're constantly searching for a sense of belonging in a world forever changed by violence, the violence of partition. Elmer in his study captures the psychological confusion, especially sadness faced by Tridib and intellectuals like him after the end of colonialism in India. Violence in the Shadow Lines. Compared to novel like Ice Candy Man, where violence is graphic and physical, the Shadow Line narrates a more subtle and psychological form of violence. Alman explains it in terms of post colonial melancholy. For a full understanding of this psychological factor or explanation, I strongly recommend you to read the article in full. Surya Khan's Nur is another example of depiction of psychological trauma with reference to partition, 1971 Pak India War, liberation movement in East Pakistan and the ultimate separation of East Pakistan from West Pakistan. The separation of East Pakistan was in fact a blow to utopian vision of a united country, a country which would provide uh, homeland to millions of Muslims of South Asia. It was a blow to two-nation theory as it brought Muslims of different ethnicity face to face in civil war, in a situation where the West Pakistan tried to hegemonize East Pakistan as the other. And if read from non-official version of history, the birth of Bangladesh illustrates the importance of the silencing of the less privileged or politically dissenting, sacrilegious, non-conformist memories and histories. Following are some of the implications of Surya Khan Noor's depiction of 1971 war, civil war between East Pakistan and West Pakistan and the ultimate separation of East Pakistan from West Pakistan. First, it tells us that violence was inherent in decolonial struggle in South Asia and it continued to linger on, leaving scars on memory and geopolitics of the region. It reveals that violence was not just an episodic occurrence, rather it was built in the fabric of decolonization, communal violence during partition, internal power struggle within independent countries, ongoing military conflict between India and Pakistan on Kashmir issue, rule of the elite in Pakistan, and unfulfilled economic aspirations are some of the examples leading to violence, continuity of violence in the region. Finally, it reveals the concept of <clears throat> an independent decolonized political order for countries like Pakistan as an unfulfilled dream of a peaceful, prosperous homeland. Summing up, by portraying the brutality and lingering effects of violence, South Asian literature offers a powerful testament to Fanon's concept of violence. Second, these narratives serve as a crucial reminder of the human cost of independence and the ongoing battles for a more just and equitable future.